I know those black supporters of the ANC will not easily vote for a white man. That's realistic. If all of us as 63 million South Africans says no, we want to really be part of these negotiations. And where do you stop? That's why I've indicated to you that uh, unless you want to end up in a, in a mental institution. <laughs> the point is, if you identify three or four crucial issues, and as I say, mm. around the economy, around education, around safety, around the state, around all of that, mm. you can literally bring civic society, labor, trade unions together to conscientize society about the dangers that we face. But what we need to do is to develop mechanisms that will give structure to the electorate. Well, here we are again. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Soli Mueng. Welcome to the number one media company, Worldview. This is where we explore everyone's perspectives on things that can broaden our own worldview. Today, I have the honor of hosting on the platform, uh, Mr. Musi Maimani, who is the former leader of the Democratic Alliance. Many of you know the former, the official opposition in South Africa's parliament. And he's now the chief activist for a movement that he began um, a few years ago, two, one, two years ago, I think, uh, which is called One South Africa Movement. We also have Herman Mashaba, Mr. Herman Mashaba, who is president of Action SA, uh, arguably one of the fastest growing political parties in South Africa at the moment. Uh, it's somewhat a darling of the media, I think. <laughs> well, he'll tell us that, others will tell us that. And we have uh, Dr. Peter Kronenwald, who is the head of the, or the president of the Freedom Front Plus, and also a, an important opposition party in parliament that has seen in, in the 2019 elections, I think it was, a number of people navigating from the Democratic Alliance to his party. Maybe he will tell us a little bit about how he managed to do that. But today's discussion is, we have had discussions on this platform with these uh, leaders of um, opposition political parties in South Africa about what their plans are for South Africa, their police, policy or approaches on different uh, uh, matters, topics that are important to a, to governing a country as complex as South Africa. We haven't had Mr. Kronvald, I haven't introduced um, in, in interview with him yet, but I hope to get to do that in the next, um, few, over the next months. Today, we're discussing how to look at South African politics differently ahead of elections. I know a lot of you, at least those I've spoken to, uh, seem to be stuck on using the old stick and hoping for different outcomes. And I have to also tell you that we invited uh, Songi Zibi, who recently announced himself to be interested to be president of South Africa. He, we have invited him, sent him, uh, but they have not responded to us. Now the discussion, and, and I'm going to put it to all of you gentlemen, is and before I get there, look if you look at the French elections recently, all the the parties tried the same route they've tried over and over over again. The, the, the temptation is always to to believe that you're so popular that you can do it, you can make it on your own. Many have tried it in South Africa, and many have failed. Many political parties have come in place since the advent of our democracy. They end up with two, three, or a handful of seats in parliament that never really even tickles the African National Congress. And, and and so in France, what happened is they all what they called la gauche unie, the, the the left of the of the Macron, of Macron's party decided for the in the second term of the elections, of course, they decided to unite against one figure to say, look, the best way we can beat this man to reduce his uh, the, his majority in the national assembly is to work together, not to go in there as individual parties because it doesn't work that way and they did manage to reduce this majority they didn't do as well as they should have but they did they did manage to to, to reduce Macron's uh, um, majority in the national assembly which is a good thing because he's going to have to negotiate with them to make decisions in the future for, for France now coming into South Africa everybody wants to be president everybody starts a party in with the hope that they will become the best thing ever but after that, it never happens. Or, or the coalition experience we have in South Africa happens after the elections. People go in there and say, okay, how much do you get? How much do you get? How much do you get? Let's see how we manage a city, a province, uh, etc." Are you people prepared to look at things differently, to stop doing things over and over again and say, well, are you prepared to say, we are doing this for South Africa, not just for, 
for self. We are prepared to have a conversation with other like-minded opposition parties in South Africa. There will be convergences and differences, of course, in terms of policies, how you approach this and that. But are you prepared to say, let's amongst ourselves find somebody we're going to coalesce around and, and head on to the ANC under one umbrella than, than different umbrellas. Mr. Holomisa has just joined us. Mr. Holomisa, welcome to the discussion. Uh, please join the, I've just asked the question. I, I'm not sure that how, I'm not sure of how much of it you've had, but let's see how uh, the others um, take on the question and then we'll come to you. We'll, I'll explain if I need to explain anything again. Uh, let's start with um, Mr. Maimani. Do you wanna go first? Yeah, no, no, thank you. And good afternoon to everybody. <clears throat> I think at the risk of being long-winded, you must appreciate what is wrong with South Africa if you want to figure out how to fix it. We have a consensus born out of 1994, which in many ways was temporary. I think with at the risk of trying to impose my own interpretation of what the drafters of the constitution looked at, but there was a clear understanding that we had to get over the 94 elections and then begin to set up a parliamentary system that would return back to an accountability mechanism. Right. We never did that. And South Africans surrendered, if you like, to the ANC and hegemonically, if you look at parties that have started subsequent, have been offshoots that emerge from the ANC. So in some sense, you've got a, an ANC with branches, if I could put it that way. The second challenge is we never reformed the electoral system. This is not me saying it, it's what President Kalama Mutlante has in the recent report said, joining on to what people like Francis Slabet said before, people like uh, President Mandela said before. So, so, so when you ask the question, what do you coalesce around? The easy answer is to say, let's coalesce to remove the current government and to bring change. That may be the start of the process, but that doesn't fix the problems of South Africa always because you can coalesce to continue the same thinking. What we have to do is to do two things in my view. The first is we have to change the system of how we vote for people. This will allow for better coalition con conditions because if myself and Honorable Bantu Olomisa disagree on something, it doesn't mean that when we vote differently within parliament that suddenly I must lose my seat or I'm anti him or whatever the case might be. It just means I'm fulfilling a particular electoral mandate that I was given. And that must only operate within an electoral system that's different. The second is, we've got to say to ourselves, what does South Africa 2.0 loosely called look like? What are the things that we agree on? Because it's easy to remove the NC. That's happened in many municipalities in the country, to be fair. And in truth, I think even in 2019, the Gauteng elections had some difficulties about it. So we need to agree on a few values, a few points that we can say this is what the future is so that you have a program that you work towards rather than simply saying let's coalesce around around yeah. removing someone and then lastly i do think if we begin to think about the current scenario as we thought about apartheid the coalition can't just be political it must invoke society it must invoke all actors in in, in, in communities to come forward and then I think we are building a new consensus towards the next 30 years of South Africa, whatever the length of tennis. Right. So in short, we're committed to the process, understanding the principles that I've just outlaid. Otherwise you end up with uh, convenience in the short term. Yeah. Mr. Mashaba. No, thank you, uh, Soli, and good afternoon, uh, colleagues. I think uh, if you look at the uh, challenges uh, that our country is facing at this point in time, uh, challenges that are not really unique to South Africa or even not unique to mankind, and you know, not only in the political ecosystem, uh, human beings have always been faced uh, with uh, challenges for the last 2000 years, and human beings are still gonna be faced with challenges um, 
really going forward. Um, we need uh, pragmatism in our approach uh, to challenges uh, that we face uh, at any point uh, in time. Like right now, we faced uh, with the challenge of uh, doing everything in our power as a matter of agency for that matter to remove uh, the ANC because for as long as we've got the ANC in power in this country, South Africa will soon become another failed African state. Uh, because they've proven beyond any reasonable doubt that they're a criminal enterprise instead of a, a political party. As far as I'm concerned, ANC is not a political party any longer. And one thing that we also have to accept as South Africans is the fact that um, for us uh, to really be able to remove the ANC at this point in time, uh, come 2024, which is uh, just under two years uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to go, no one single political party will be able to remove uh, the ANC out, out of power. So coalitions uh, are there to stay with us uh, for a long, long time. Um, because uh, ultimately, if we are Democrats, uh, we believe in the constitutional framework uh, that our countries uh, presented to us. We've got to accept that uh, we've got to really find a way to work together. And I think for us, uh, or, in, or me in particular, I have absolutely no problem to really work with anyone, as long as not the ANC. I just want to really make it really very clear that uh, Herman Masha and Action SA will never go into a coalition with the ANC under any circumstances. But we're happy to work with uh, other parties. But when do we work with other parties? I think uh, I don't really believe one can actually start talking about uh, coalition arrangements before the outcome of the elections because uh, you, you, no one can actually predict uh, what kind of outcome you're going to get. All of us, when we go into battle, I'm, I've been trained uh, uh, throughout my life that whatever I do in life, I've got to do it to win. But then it depends now what kind of win you ultimately achieve. And it's only then that you can um, uh, that start negotiations regarding the coalition. And I think uh, I'm immensely proud uh, of uh, the achievement uh, we, um, uh, we achieved uh, with the local government elections. Uh, I think Dr. Ronevald can tell you uh, I was instrumental in forming uh, and removing NC from the three metros in the city of um, uh, uh, Johannesburg, Ikuruleni, and uh, um, and Twani. Is it easy? Coalitions are by their nature diff diff difficult. You can't really uh, be naive that you're going to a coalition and, and you think it's going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be difficult. But at the end of the day, I think we, we're making progress. Um, steady but show in preparation for 2024 uh, where ultimately we can remove ANC out of uh, national uh, that government and uh, we're happy we're working with um, with Freedom Front Plus, uh, we're working with the DA, who have always really very difficult partner in 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 our in our arrangement. But ultimately, we are prepared to to really work with anyone as long as it's not really the ANC, so that we can really save the country. And at all the time, what we're going to do, we're not going to really use ideology in our approach of resolving our differences. We're going to use pragmatism. We're not going to use uh, idiosyncrasy. We are going to use uh, reality, pragmatism. What is the challenges that you are facing? What do we stand for? And the thing is, if you go into a coalition arrangement, uh, don't really go into a coalition arrangement as if you've got a tooth as majority. <laughs> you go into a coalition with a full understanding that it's a give and take. There are certain things that you might not uh, like, some things that might not resonate with you. But at the end of the day, what you've got to do to show respect to all the parties involved, make sure that you operate in good faith and be really be prepared to com uh, to compromise. And I think for us, Section S uh, Section SA, we're really prepared to do that. Uh, we've demonstrated beyond any reasonable doubt that we're the only political party not just committed to unseating of the ANC, capable. We did it in Johannesburg. Uh, in the three metros in Gauteng, not only there, in all the six municipalities we operated, we took the ANC under 50%, but in Gauteng in particular, we, we caused them some serious, serious damage. And uh, we've got uh, Dr. Grunewald, uh, we're pleased okay. to really be working with them uh, for the future of our country together.
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Let's move to Dr. Hunwald. Are you prepared to coalesce with others ahead of the elections? We we, we know about anyway, we, 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 gentlemen, you, your parties don't have a choice but to go into coalitions after the elections when you don't have enough numbers. But that's not what we're discussing. What we discuss, what I would like to know, are you prepared to coalesce ahead of the elections around ideas? There's no way that you can change the way South Africa is governed, the direction of it from everything. Well, the education system, the foreign affairs policy, the relationships with Africa, with the world, education, health, business development, everything, science and, 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 and technology, you can't change those things if you can't remove the ANC. So, and if you think about it, if you really think about it, gentlemen, and we will we'll make that out again, when the African National Congress first came into power in 94, it wasn't alone. It wasn't just the ANC. All those movements, the NGOs, and quite many people and organizations that were not necessarily together in my in mindset, even those end conscription campaigners were not necessarily members of the African National Congress, NGOs, all those organizations that were under the United Democratic uh, uh, Front, they, they all decided we have to get rid of apartheid. Okay, and so the ANC won election, the elections in 94, and it's been over time, and you have, the, of course, you also have the trade unions, the South African Communist Party, everybody said, we're going to stand behind the ANC. That's how it's been running up to now. Now, if you guys come alone to say, on my own, I'm going to remove the ANC, it's failed. Up to now, it's failed. I don't know. Dr. What, what do you think? Well, firstly, sorry, after due to all the honorable colleagues, I want to say to you, we were already in the process of taking us to moving forward, as you said, that are we willing before the election to take hands? And one of uh, the ways we are taking hands is what is happening at local government uh, level, where we are in formal coalitions. That is one thing. Now, let me first say that I always say the biggest enemy of anyone is if you're in a state of denial. Why right. do I say that? Because that if you're in a state of denial, then you don't realize the realities and the threats uh, that is actually endangering everyone's future. And what is happening in South Africa is that I think there are many people, the electorate of the electorate, who is really in a state of denial. So what should be the first object? The first object to take hands is to say that, and we've used the poster in our local government election and to say to stop the decay. What do you mean by that? We are on a verge, South Africa is on the verge of a failed state. That is where we are. And we as opposition parties, we already met with some other leaders and we said yes we have to take hands to ensure that we stop that south africa becomes a failed state but to do that you're quite right you need the electorate to support you there are numerous organizations you've mentioned it and let me put it in simple terms what south africa need uh, is a udf again uh, like we had in the 90s, where political parties, different political parties, can take hands with NGOs, other organizations, um, civil uh, society organizations, where we say that we want to prevent South Africa to go over the verge into a false state. And that's what I say, mean when I say we must stop the decay. Right. So what, what is the glue? that you must have a glue to keep the people together. And I say that is the glue. Now, we are a democracy. In fact, we are a constitutional democracy. So we have to play the game, if I can put it that way, within uh, the, can I say, the rules of a constitutional democracy. Now, firstly, you know, in Afrikaans, they have a saying that says, Ian drag mag mag. It means if we all agree and we take hands, then we have power. Right. Now, some people think that means that we all have to combine in one political party. I say no. We're in 2022. It's a modern world 
My perspective is that you can have different political parties. And if you participate, we have to participate in terms of the electoral system of South Africa. They're in the process to uh, ensure that uh, independents can also participate. And the fact of the matter is, if you go all in one political party, you're going to lose voters. What's the reality? The reality is, and I use uh, numbers, there are about 36 million people in South Africa who's eligible to vote. Of those 36 million, only 26 million register. And I refer now to 2019 election. And of those 26 million, only about 70% voted. If you break down the, the numbers and the figures. You say only you 70 or 117? 70, 70%. Right. right. So, but if you break it down, then you will find that the ANC at this moment has a majority of 58% in the National Assembly, but they only have 27% of eligible voters in South Africa. So the ANC is ruling with 27% with almost a 60% majority. Why? Because the electorate does not go and vote. And that is what we must say to each other. Yes, the political parties on the one hand, we are already taking hands. We have to combine that with other organizations to mobilize the people. And then we also say, but then the people must also come to the party, the electorate, and they must understand you can vote for any political party. You can vote for an independent, it doesn't matter. Your vote counts. Because you will get some people, they will never vote for any other political party who they vote now for. And, and, and one very good thing of the proportional system is that you can have all those votes and they will contribute to ensure that we as opposition parties can form a coalition and say, yes, sorry for the ANC, you tried your best but your best was not good enough. In fact, after 28 years, you took us to the verge of a failed state. Therefore, we want to save South Africa. That is the glue from my side. And we can go in more detail on the practical ways to take those hands. But that's my vision, specifically for 2024. And uh, of course, there are differences, uh, but again, those differences, I always say that we don't have the luxury in South Africa anymore to differ in such a manner that we don't respect each other. We have to take hands to save South Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Holomisa, General Holomisa, I don't know if you want me to say General. Some people, some people still call it General Holomisa. So what are your views on this topic? Thank you very much and uh, apologies for connecting you uh, uh, late. The truth of the matter is that uh, the tripartite alliance, as we know it, has failed South Africa and has failed to run this country effectively. Many people, when they debate, they tend to say, no, what's the point of voting? because there is no alternative. I'd rather stay at home or I'll vote the ANC-led tripartite alliance. So we need, therefore, to make sure that when we talk about alliance, what is this animal going to look like? Are we going to enter into a pre-election coalition arrangement? or are we going to focus on post-election coalition? So if we think that we need to discuss that before the elections, then it gives an advantage to us to sit around the table and check where are the failures? What are we going to say to the people in terms of improving? Right. The failures which have led now for people to say we are honestly Paris Slope. 
Then once we identify those points, then we would agree as coalition partners, those who work together, to say, this is the manifesto we must sell to the people. We must not be seen to be reactionaries or to be seen to be ganging just for the sake of ganging up against the ANC. Right. But we focus on issues, issues around security, issues around the economy of the country, issues around unemployment. The question would be, people would say we've heard that noise before, but we need to come up with the how part. How are we going to implement this? Also, in terms of the electoral systems, we must remember that the proportional representation at the beginning was intended to help the ANC, whose members were not known by the community. Some were in jail, others were in exile. Mm -hmm. So it was for them to vote for a party. But unfortunately, the deployment policies of theirs uh, let them down. I fully endorse and have written papers and delivered speeches on the need to introduce a mixed system where you have proportionally as well, proportional as well as constituency-based system. Mm -hmm. So I support the call for, 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 for that because it will improve the accountability. Now, if we agree that, uh, let's say, for instance, we must meet uh, from in September onwards to compare notes under one roof. Such a meeting should not be confined only to the members of party parliament, uh, member, the parties who are in parliament or mm -hmm. present parliament, but we should open it to other parties which are outside and also look at the sectors of our civil society uh, and so on and so on, and also look at the possibility of registering one party. That means if we agree on a coalition and pursuing one man my manifesto, we could, could easily do this under one umbrella, registering that umbrella with IEC, but without losing our identity, as we have seen in other countries, even here at home, it's just happened in France. It's just happened in France. They all kept their identities. They aligned under one umbrella and they reduced the majority massively of, 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 uh, of Macron. Yeah, yes. You have ANC, you have SACP, COSATU, they have their identity. So there's nothing wrong with doing that, but we must make sure that our message mm -hmm. is directed to solving the problems which are faced facing the country. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we will make it, we don't have to go in line now. Each one of you has been given an opportunity to say, their, uh, their, to express their views from the, their party perspective. I think all of you tend to agree on the principle. The question becomes how, and my man spoke about the values. I like the idea. He's, uh, Kornval spoke about uh, the UDF kind of structure. Mr. Holmes, we've spoken about getting together into a room and agreeing and comparing notes. Uh, Mashama said we work with people to working with other parties to manage to reduce the ANC's uh, numbers and, and to take it off power from uh, in, in, here and there. Now, Songe Zibi is now. Uh, has just announced that he wants to be president and let's not be fooled other people are going to announce themselves maybe some of them might even be sponsored by the ANC just to mess up the situation a little bit that's how it plays in politics sometimes so we mustn't expect that the only faces that we're going to see uh, you know heading towards the next elections will be the ones we see in the rooms and obviously the other parties that have not been invited here or that have not accepted the invitation for all sorts of other, of other reasons there is a need to really ask ourselves do we keep doing things the same way over and over again and expect different outcomes? Or do we say, let's compare notes. Let's get into, let's get into a big room and ask ourselves, where do we agree, tick, 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 tick. Where do we disagree strongly? Where do we agree strongly? Where, where do we have potential coming together, convergence as it were? And what are the values? And I think the question of it is really, really important because South Africa is in trouble. Gentlemen, and I know you know this. South Africa is in serious trouble. If the ANC retains power beyond 2024, 
this country is going to go down. One of you described it as an African state, a potentially failed African state. Yes, it's going to go if, if it's not almost there already. So I, I would like to know, are you, and, and I like the idea also that was put on the table by one of you, that it's not just the political parties represented in, in, in parliament. Society, South Africans must come together. We, people must stop asking, but whom do we vote for? Whom do we vote for? You have, are the leaders of society. You could get into that room, compare notes, agree to disagree, but have one thing in mind. And the aim is not to remove the, of course, the, the aim is to build a better South Africa for all. But you can't build a South Africa for all while the ANC controls the resources, the policies, everything. You can't. So the, removing the ANC should be a means to an end, which is the, the end of which is to build a better country. I mean, is, it, is there a problem with working together before the elections? I mean, those who obviously have doubts about this, or do you think, Mr. Mashama, you seem to think the best way to approach this is to go to elections and come and compare notes afterwards. I mean, do you? Is it, is it a non-negotiable uh, position for you? I think, uh, Soli, what you are proposing, I don't want to end up in a mental institution. I think uh, I want to keep my sanity. <laughs> uh, what you are actually proposing, without any doubt, will let me or anyone in, in, in a mental institution. I think we live in a democratic constitutional democracy. And uh, the number of uh, political parties uh, should not really be an issue. Because let's say if we start the negotiations beforehand, uh, then uh, tell me uh, who can actually predetermine the outcome and the size of uh, the electoral support you're going to get. So I don't think, uh, honestly, uh, as Action SA, would not really want to really waste our energy and the risk of lending in a mental institution. Uh, by getting involved in such discussions. We are happy to talk to the parties once we know that uh, we are talking with people who've got an electoral support, not people who are just really looking for jobs because going into politics in South Africa in particular has really been people going into politics uh, because they're looking for work. We as Action SA, we are not in this job uh, because we're looking for work. We are in this job to ensure that we can save South Africa from the ANC. And we are prepared to work with the political parties that have got electoral support, not their own ideological support that they think they have, because then where do you really end up? So our view is that we will start negotiations once the elections results are announced, then we know we're talking with people with a mandate. Okay, uh, Mr. Mamani, you mentioned values. What are the key values to you that you put for this sort of thing to happen? Look, I mean, again, I speak for ordinary people. I think we must agree on the caliber of leadership that we have, because that's, you, you see, if you just frame it anti-ANC, you lose ethics. Mm -hmm. You lose the value of Ubuntu, which has economic and social and practical issues. The mistake we can make here is that the failure of South Africa is merely a government failure. It, it's not. Because South Africa has lost values, you've lost other issues in society that are not a function of the state as a matter of interest. Right. So while we may all obsess about the state, which is correct that we must do so, because that's where leadership is given from, but we mustn't lose sight of the private sector and its contribution to that economically and in business mm -hmm. and what values guide that. We mustn't lose track of the fact that in communities, there's a challenge of accountability. So that must be fixed. So I would argue there's a values conversation. Mm -hmm. I would argue that there's a vision conversation because the vision can't just be, let me and my party get to the end. That's one vision. Right. But actually, if we want to talk about an economically prosperous South Africa, what does that mean that creates work? Mm -hmm. What does it mean when you say you are going to attend to the question of corruption? What, the, what kind of education system do we want? Because here's the point that mustn't be missed here, is that we have, and I, 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 I think I might differ slightly with the numbers that uh, Dr. Hrunavald put forward. It's actually the majority of eligible voters are not voting. Right. And that yeah. is not going to be animated by simply saying, let's throw in more parties onto the list. Uh, and hope that more, it's a bit like saying if the soccer league is boring for people, let's add more clubs onto it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully people can watch more clubs and hopefully they'll, no. I think right. that we must go back to the people, make them part of the solution. 
because the mistake that says you will create a messianic complex that says those people liberated us. In fact, it's the people of this country. So to me, I think there are two points that I want to actually emphasize here, is that actually coalitions do work. Numbers show, and Mr. Mashaba and, and the myriads of mayors that have stood up, even in 2016, delivered better outcomes. So coalitions do work. I know the NC will want to tell people, no, forget coalitions, they are chaotic and all of that. That's nonsense. It's not true. The numbers bear it out that economically things do change. But furthermore, we can't just leave it at a post-match thing. We've got to ensure that there's a credible offer to the citizens who are not voting. Right. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a scenario where only the politically activated citizens turn out to vote, whereas the rest still sit at home and say, as things sit today, citizens cannot discern the difference. And maybe I have the luxury of being outside the parliamentary process that you get to engage people. They do not discern the difference. We've got to show them the unifying factors and the direction and the vision and say, if you share these values, you can go. I agree with Mr. Martin. Ideology is not going to solve the issue. Mm -hmm. But if me and all the respective players who are in here, we say, here's the vision, here are the values, then we can animate the people who are sitting out and going, we're not going to participate in the electoral process because it can't just stop on voting day. It must continue even after voting day. Otherwise, we'll end up with state capture just in a, in a rainbow color <laughs> rather than in one color that we have at the moment. Yeah, I like that. Look, Dr. Honorable Dr. said earlier, and I totally agree, that many South Africans tend to be strongly uh, uh, associated with a political party. It's very hard, especially for traditional supporters of the ANC to move over to it. I'm not saying they haven't. People have moved over, in, but a lot of people, a lot more people, and to your point, uh, uh, Mr. Mamani, a lot of people have decided to stay home. You will remember famously when uh, South Africa frustrated the Dalai Lama's um, um, application for a visa to come to South Africa for, for the late Archbishop Tutu's uh, birthday party. Tutu was really, really angry. He was livid. And he stood up instead of saying, I'm going to vote for somebody else. He said, I'm not going to vote. <laughs> and for me, that was telling. And there are many South Africans I know, and I'm sure all of you know, many South Africans who believe exactly what we just said, who think that it's all the same. These people are all the same. So if you came together under one exciting umbrella, and you know, think of Moses in the Bible. This man who, according to the Bible, walked the people of Palestine from, from, from bondage to freedom, but he knew that he wouldn't get there to the promised land. He didn't get there, but his role was to say, I'm going to walk you to the promised land. So it doesn't have to be you who gets to the other side to cut, to cut the, 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 the ribbon. Now, if you think that you have to be the one who cuts the ribbon, maybe it's all about you. If you, think, if you really, really think about it, if you need to say South Africa is in trouble, how do we, so how can I play a role to help South Africa? How can we get together and ditch some, some of the things that I believe fundamentally? You, when you get to that wall that uh, the General Mao, Holomisa referred to, you're going to have to give up something. That's what South Africa, South Africa's post-democratic arrangement is a, is, is a product of compromise, much compromise. We need to do it again. We need more compromise again. We need to say, in order to get the ANC out so that we can start rebuild, we need to promise something before the elections, not after the, the elections, because after the elections, then we could have people sticking to their own uh, colors. But after the elections, we're saying, here's a list of the things that we promise. Okay, let's mobilize South Africans who are aligned to parties, who are not aligned to parties, who have not voted, who have given up. Let's give them some hope on something that's new, that's uniting South Africa for change. Change that will lead to even more systemic changes that we need in South Africa. Why is it so difficult? It's not difficult, uh, so it's uh, totally impractical because mm. what you are honestly and generally you are, you are suggesting, it's, it's something that is completely uh, impractical because then tell me who do you start uh, having this coalition arrangement with? Because uh, then, uh, because if all all of us as 63 million South Africans says, no, we want to really be part of these negotiations. And where do you stop? That's why I've indicated to you that uh, unless you want to end up in a, in a mental institution. <laughs> and one thing for sure, I am not deliberately going to go into a mental institution. Okay. I want to really focus on, 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 on ensuring that we can save this country from the ANC. And once obviously we've removed them from the ANC, political parties or individuals with the mandate behind them 
then we can then start a coalition arrangement. But if you start now, tell me, who do you include or who do you exclude in, 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 in those negotiations? Mm -hmm. Solly, if I might come in on this slide. Uh, firstly, I think we must understand what we're talking about. Yeah, you, your question was, are the political parties willing to take hands uh, on certain issues before the election? Now, I agree with uh, Mr. Herman Mashaba. Uh, there's no way that you're going to get into one merge, into one political party before an election. In no, fact, that that's, will that's, not... That's not... That's not the suggestion. The suggestion is not to form a political party. Okay, it's okay, called a national coalition of okay, as okay. many parties as you want, not a political right. party. You right, still I I, re, re, retain your identity. Okay, fine. Uh, but now we must also remember, uh, uh, in terms of the... Constitutional democracy, it's only political parties, and I said we're going to include uh, independence now, uh, right. that can participate in parliament. And parliament uh, elects the executive of South Africa. So in the end, we're going to end up in parliament. But let me give you uh, an example where we're already taking hands. Under the initiative of uh, General Bonto Olomisa, for instance, the opposition parties in parliament, we came together and we said to each other, what are the real issues the electorate is expecting from us as political parties, as opposition parties in parliament to attend to, to ensure there is accountability. And I don't want to go into those detail. Uh, uh, General Alomisa can refer to that if he wish, but we took hands. Even <coughs> with political parties who are not at the moment uh, in a coalition, a formal coalition, but as opposition parties in parliament. And that for me is a good sign that we as opposition move together. And what do we say? What and who do we put first? It's the electorate. Uh, it's like in the coalitions on local government election. And yes, it takes something from political leaders. I've always said in a coalition, you need stronger political party leaders. Why? Because at local government, what we are now saying is, what is the main object? The main object is to ensure, ensure service delivery. Right. Better service delivery than the ANC can provide. They had the chance of 28 years. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the focus. That's the glue of the coalition. And in a coalition, it is so, and that's why I say you need stronger political party leaders, that as a leader, it is quite natural that you want the best for your political party. But now in a coalition, you are actually forced to have a compromise. It's not necessarily exactly what you want. But then you say to yourself as a political leader, what is in the best interest of the electorate? What is the best interest of South Africa? But I want to strongly emphasize again, you need to opulate uh, political parties. And uh, I don't think, I think we have enough political parties in South Africa, but what do you want? And I always say you must also be realistic. Don't be in a state of denial. There's no way that the Freedom Front Plus on a huge scale will take voters from the ANC. And I always say I'm realistic. I'm not colorblind, I'm white. And I know those black supporters of the ANC will not easily vote for a white man. That's realistic. And therefore, what we need is we want strong leaders, suitable leaders who can attract the voters from the ANC. Uh, and that's part of, of the whole picture that if you want to ensure that political parties govern in the best interest of the electorate, we must unseat the ANC. So it's, it's a combination of the two. But having said that, I also said, yes, we have to go to, for instance, um, NGOs, other organizations, and we did it before. Uh, let me give you an example. With uh, the previous president, Zuma, uh, Musi Maimani, the DA actually took an initiative there, and we had the march to parliament. Uh, that was just before the 8th 
motion of no confidence in Zuma. But in that march, it was not only the opposition parties, it was also other organizations who wanted to get rid of Zuma. Uh, I was not very popular, so note, uh, side note, because I said the previous that I don't think we're going to success and everybody was not very happy with my, <laughs> my answer but that beside. But, but I, what I want to say is that was an initiative. Uh, at one stage we had, for instance, a march to the union buildings uh, with uh, some labor unions joined into that. Uh, but it was not a party political issue to say, now we're going to vote for that party. It was a combined march of different organizations. And that is what I mean by mobilizing also the electorate to come forward, to say we support, to say that we must stop the decay. Let's vote. You can vote for your political party. and But this is what we expect. Then you start a movement. And that's what I meant when I referred to the UDF. Right. So are you telling us that in order for the Freedom Front to, uh, to attract more black people, it must have a black leader? Well, I can assure you that uh, we would have attracted more black voters. Mm -hmm. I do. You will be surprised. I receive phone calls from Soweto, uh, ask whether we can establish a branch. Uh, we're in the process. Uh, so sorry, Armon and uh, all the other people. <laughs> You're going to get the branch there. Uh, but I mean, I, I'm speaking uh, generally. Okay. And that's why I say we must be realistic. Make right. people, people will say, but that's not politically correct. Let's not be in a state of denial. Okay. Charlie, so, if, I, yeah, if, if I can just affirm what Dr. Grunewald is saying, there is a dynamic upon which you also don't want to ask parties to get back into a hegemonic view. It's important for the Freedom Front Plus to fight right. for the issues the Freedom Front Plus fights for. Right. And you don't have to spend all your life pre-coalitions trying to iron out the mm -hmm. ideological differences. Because mm -hmm. let me talk, for example, some of the faith-based parties. Mm -hmm. I can sit here and say, let the anti-vaxxers end up in the same party as the vaxxers, as a right. good example. Right. You can spend between now and 2024 debating those issues and never settle the point. That's not the point. The point is, if you identify three or four crucial issues, and as I say, mm -hmm. around the economy, around education, around safety, around the state, around all of that, mm -hmm. you can literally bring civic society, labor, trade unions together to right. conscientize society about the dangers that we face. Right. Because I think the danger of state failure whilst universally felt, isn't always fully experienced and what the nature of the problem is. That's why when you say, let's face facts for facts, for, in the local government elections, a significant proportion, still with high levels of unemployment, crime, et cetera, voted for the ANC, which means there are people who still believe to some degree that there's a project here. Yeah. We've got to engage citizens broadly is my, is my basic argument on the issues that matter and bring them around. So, and I don't think the Freedom Front Plus, with respect, needs a black leader. It needs Mr. Hunova to say with Africans and South Africans, we can be part of the dream of what this country must look like. That's okay. what it means. Okay, so what I'm getting and what I keep hearing from many political party leaders in South Africa, opposition parties, this this almost like a level of defeatism or maybe realism, realism you'll call it. You seem to be saying, many of you seem to be saying, uh, we know that we are not going to 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 um, to renew to reduce the the, the, the ANC massively. It will remain in power, but we must just create a. Uh, no, a ANC a is not going to remain in power. The ANC is not going to remain in power in 2024. Okay, that's great. That's great. So, in order to change the direction of South Africa, and this is my personal view, it's not we not we don't just need new faces in power, new faces at the head of SOEs, new faces at the head of other Chapter 9 institutions. There are systemic changes that need to happen, uh, General Holomisa. There are things, and if you don't have the numbers, you can't change those things. That's why it's important to, you can't change the direction of South Africa's foreign policy. You can't change South Africa sending money to Cuba if you, if you don't take 
control, take away that power to send money to Cuba unnecessarily uh, without a, with sufficient robust ex, you know engagement with the people of South Africa. If you don't take that power from the ANC, doctor. So, Dr. Holmes, do you think it's just a matter of changing the faces, or do you agree that in order to make sure the state capture and all those bad things that have happened over to South Africa over the past 15 years don't happen again? Well, I'm a firm believer of the uh, future of this country around the coalitions. And uh, you're speaking to a converted. I organized or I chaired the meetings, for instance, after local government election in 2016, which included the far right and the far left political parties. Uh, who agreed at the end of the day that let us work together and run those municipalities. So I foresee, therefore, that come 2024, uh, the population is going to demand that let there be an alternative even before, but such an alternative I think we should be in a position to say, let us have a, a meeting about this, this issue of coalitions as political party leaders. And then we can take it to our structures and, and, and hear what their view is. If we agree, for instance, or uh, it can draft a memorandum of operation on who will be participating in this. We could develop a name of that umbrella, logo, constitution, the vision, the values which a uh, 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 colleague, my money was talking about. So then we give this platform to all platform to all stakeholders, which would include traditional leaders, faith, uh, I mean, the religious groupings, workers and so on. You may be surprised that uh, even within the current ruling party, maybe some of them or, or, or majority of them would, 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 would join such an initiative. But what we need to do is to develop mechanisms that will give structure to the electorate. And also that structure must talk to the issues at hand. Mm -hmm. Currently, this country since 1994 has never had a, 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 an agreement or consensus on what kind of macroeconomic policies mm -hmm. this country could have. That is the opportunity which uh, this coalition could drive uh, through towards the election. We can talk about the least issue of security but we talk about South Africans, all South Africans, black and white, but not being blind to the fact that we still have backlogs, imbalances of the past, which would need to be addressed. So what we need to do is to say to the people of South Africa, the ANC Tripartite Alliance has abandoned the original agenda that of improving the quality of life of all. Therefore, this new coalition or this new umbrella party organization is going to do APCTE. Well, with respect to the position of uh, Mr. Mashaba, he is not saying he wouldn't be part of the coalition, but we still feel that it should be, it should join after the elections. It's fair. That's what other people do. But in the case of South Africa, because we are dealing with a broad church, we need it to be seen to be a broad church before the election. Then we'll talk business. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I must. I must apologize. Earlier, earlier in my reference to Moses, I said he led the people of Palestine. I think it's the people of Israel that he led from from bondage into to freedom. But uh, I, I didn't want to become controversial, Solly, but I wanted to correct <laughs> you, but I kept quiet. <laughs> <laughs> because after I said it, I kept thinking, mm, wait a minute, was it the Palestinians <laughs> or the Israelis? But it doesn't. I mean, the the, the, the principle the principle is really a matter of somebody coming in yeah. to say, if you look at how NASA operates in America, they launch these these motor vehicles to go into 
foreign affairs, foreign uh, faraway planets to, to 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 explore, right? And some of them will land in 20, 15, even 25 years time or more some of these people will not be there when that happens they don't do it so that they can cut the ribbon they do it because it's good for humanity that's the point i'm trying to make here all right so but i would like to ask you i would i would like to ask each one of you before we finish what are the non-negotiables please try and be like in one less than a minute i think it's very clear about for mr mashama he doesn't want to end up in a in a mental institute but if there's something else please tell us can you start with you mr mashama what is the one key non-negotiable for you where this sort of thing to happen? Oh. I think for us as a section, I say we committed uh, to a coalition arrangement because we know it's an inevitable. We cannot really avoid it. But however, we will obviously get involved in a coalition. Once we know we, we, we're negotiating with people with a mandate, not right. really people the way who we don't know where they're actually coming from. So we are committed to coalition. We've proven beyond any reasonable doubt. Uh, Dr. Frune Valt can tell you the role that we've played uh, in, 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 in the three metros uh, in, in, in Houtin because of uh, we had um, legitimacy. We, 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 we had the mandate uh, from the electorate, but we cannot get involved uh, in negotiations with someone who does not really have the, 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 the mandate of the electorate. Okay. And, yes. and okay, what is important is that and for us, it's very clear. Uh, we will never go into a coalition with the ANC. That one, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not going to happen. Right. We won't but, go into any uh, coalition with the ANC. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, while the, the mandate to change South Africa will come from people who've been voting, who are committed to vote, there are still too many people who are not voting and they need a new voice to get them out of their, uh, their living rooms to go and vote. So we have to speak, and what Dr. Kronenberg said it to Ella, we have to speak to a broader, and I think uh, uh, General Olomisa also said it, it's not just the people who are currently voting, it's how do we create an exciting message ahead of 2024 to get those people who have give, who've given up on existing political parties to stand up and say, you know what, we can be part of this rainbow coalition. Okay, That's Mr. Amani, what's your view? Yeah, to me, I think the non-negotiable is about, is about the ethics of leadership. And when I say leadership, not leader, mm -hmm. it's leadership broadly. Because right. the leadership is, is a function of not only who operates within the umbrella, but also in society, in business, etc. You can't replace a patronage-driven organizational system that is led by some people with character questions that cannot serve the interests of South Africa. And then say for opportunistic reasons, bring on another new crop to do exactly the same. Right. Countries rise and fall on the back of the broad leadership it brings on the table. And you can see when there was inappropriate leadership, where this country went, where there was good leadership, where this country went. And I think we'd, it would be foolish of us to not to negate the fact that in the beginning of our democracy, we started to see growth. We had a number of years where there were challenges and maybe corruption was allowed to thrive all the way from the beginning. If we're going to replace it, we need a caliber of leadership that is vision focused, that will invite young people and the future of this country to be a part of that. That to me is a non-negotiable. Otherwise, you are dealing with scrupulous characters and you are never going to stick with the principle of integrity that you need going forward. Okay. Dr. Kronwa, uh, Dr. Uh, General Halamisa, I thank you. Uh, in my case, I don't have any precondition. I don't have any precondition. Mm -hmm. All I want to see is to see that South Africans can work together to find a solution to correct the wrongs of the current regime. In terms of corruption, we know what they have done. The Zondo Commission is about to publish a final report. And that final report, we should also use it as a way of uh, uh, correcting these wrongs. Some of us have been betting on a wicket of anti-corruption from as early as 1987, which led me to intervene, for instance, in the trans government. The word corruption when I joined the ANC led me to be shown the door. And I've been doing that right through. I fully agree with Mr. Maimane that our vision and values must be clear from the word, from the word go. But for now, 
let us try and find an institution whether one is one of the universities to host a conference talking about the future of South Africa, including the issue of coalition. Let the South Africans talk about this so that we don't confine it to ourselves as leaders for selfish ends. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Kronwald? Well, firstly, we must understand if we say that we have some uh, non-negotiables, then actually what we mean is it doesn't mean that if you're not successful in that specific issue that you have to withdraw from a coalition. Uh, one very principle of the Freedom Front Plus, for instance, is self-determination. We will not uh, say, well, we're not going to try to enhance that because we do believe that communities must have more political powers. And that's a debate on its own. So that's one. But I think, and uh, it's already been mentioned, you have to have sound principles and values because that's a problem in South Africa. Uh, there's no respect. Uh, let's look at Parliament, what happened last week, two weeks ago. Uh, it is disrespectful. We need to look at principles like respect, even if we differ from each other. Uh, we have to ensure that there's honesty when we work with the taxpayers' money. Those are and some people see it as very conservative values. Then I say, but those values are very good because that's what we need in South Africa. And in that framework, we will talk to other political parties to see we can form a coalition. And I do believe if you have those sound uh, uh, and good principles and values, then we will find each other uh, to ensure what is in the best interest uh, of South Africa and the electorate. Can I close by saying uh, you referred to Moses who took the Israelis for 40 years, but we must also remember it took 10 plagues before the people realized <laughs> that they have to follow Moses. So uh, that's what I want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I didn't know that part. That's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gentlemen, you have been awesome as usual. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to the party. Look, this is just the beginning of a discussion. Mr. Holmes, do you want to say something? Do you know how Holmes are saying? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. It's been great. I hope that this is just the beginning of discussions. There will be convergences. There will be divergences. This is who we are, South Africans. We are so opinionated. And there are many more of us. We're not even representatives of all the voices and the opinions that are out there. But we are who we are because of, 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 of negotiations, of discussions, of holding hands across all sorts of boundaries to say we have to do it for our country. And I, I believe that we can do it again. I just want to say to our listeners out there, if you've come this far listening to this conversation, to the content, and you like, it means that you like it. We thank you very much. And we would love you to please continue liking, sharing the discussions, get more people to be part of these discussions. And, and, and if you want to support Worldview, please, there's an opportunity for you. You can write to us at worldview.help at gmail.com. My name is Solim Wang at Worldview. Thank you again. We shall be doing it again over and over again. Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you.